Please be aware, in this podcast series, we talk about all areas of safeguarding, which some people may find upsetting. So please make sure you're okay listening to today's topic. Be mindful of those around you, such as children, that you might not want to listen in. Hi, I'm SSS Safeguarding Director Sam Preston. And I'm former head teacher and content author Sarah Spinks. So today we are talking about gaslighting. Now, the term we use today originally comes from the 1938 play Gaslight, although probably most uh, most people will remember the later film adaptations. I vividly remember the film starring Charles Boye and Ingrid Bergman, a superb film if you've never seen it, definitely worth the watch. Not to give too much away, in the script, a character manipulates another character over time, uh, which includes regularly dipping the gaslights in their house to make the victim believe that they are going insane. So the ongoing drip by drip manipulative and coercive behaviour, it's really, truly shocking. So from this, the term gaslighting, it's now used to describe manipulative, abusive behaviours, something we often see in the context of domestic abuse, for example. So Sarah, why are we focusing on this term when thinking about safeguarding in education? Well, gaslighting in the context of UK schools refers to the manipulative and psychologically abusive behaviour where individuals attempt to make someone doubt their own thoughts, feelings or experiences. So is this behaviour something to be vigilant for, say for pupil behaviour? It can be, Sam, but also gaslighting behaviour can be also be carried out by teachers and other staff. Oh, wow, that's really disturbing. Yeah, and in the context of UK schools, gaslighting can manifest in various ways, such as Denying or dismissing feelings uh, where school authorities or peers might minimise a student's concerns, telling them they're overreacting or their feelings are invalid. Uh, False accusations, and that's where accusing a student of making up stories, exaggerating or being dishonest about their experiences, especially in cases of bullying, harassment or abuse. Um, Shifting blame. Uh, So that's sort of shifting responsibility from the perpetrator to the victim, making the victim feel as though they are at fault for any mistreatment or discomfort they may be experiencing. Withholding information. So that's deliberately keeping students in the dark about important matters, decisions or events which can create confusion and anxiety. Invalidating experiences, so that's dismissing a student's experiences of sexism, racism, bullying or other issues as unimportant or non-existent despite clear evidence to the contrary. Confusing narratives, providing contradictory information or changing stories, causing the victim to question their memory and perception. And undermining confidence, you know, that's consistently undermining a student's self-esteem and self-worth making them feel powerless and insecure. So gaslighting can be particularly harmful in school environments. I'm, 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 kind of, you know, I'm just processing all of that and I'm, I'm kind of guessing that that's because of the environment. You know, I'm, I'm thinking how, you know, how pupils perceive the balance of power and the fact that they can't just walk away and avoid being in that environment. Yeah, it can lead to emotional distress, self-doubt and a sense of isolation among pupils. It can hinder their ability to speak up about instances of bullying, harassment or other problems that they may be facing. And that can have devastating results. Yeah, off the top of my head, I'm thinking um, it's going to affect the obvious things like attainment, attendance, etc. You know, but also sort of experiencing this type of abuse and it and it is abuse um it may have really serious consequences absolutely you know imagine feeling you can't escape this abuse and just how damaging the ongoing process of being manipulated would be to someone's mental health and remember we're talking about emotionally immature young people here so they're more likely they don't have those strategies to combat or 
have that resilience, you know, to cope with such behaviours. Experiencing gaslighting can lead, you know, to withdrawal, low self-esteem and even suicide. Gosh, yeah. So we're raising awareness today. So what can schools and colleges do? Well, I think the first thing is to recognise and address gaslighting. You know, it's essential to create, you know, a supportive and respectful school environment. Yeah. So from a governance perspective, I guess we need to recognise this in policymaking. So safeguarding behaviour policies for pupils, clearly setting out expectations and sanctions, but also, you know, going, going back to what you were saying about the adults in our HR policies for staff, you know, so what else do we need to do? I think it's really important that training includes raising awareness. You know, teachers and school staff should be able to recognise and prevent gaslighting. Importantly, there needs to be clear reporting mechanisms in place to address, you know, these type of manipulative behaviours when they occur. So we're not only talking about having accessible systems where, you know, pupils feel they can seek help. We've also got to have systems in place where staff who witness such behaviours, feel they can speak up. Oh, yeah. And, you know, remember, it can be challenging, particularly where junior members of staff may be questioning the behaviour of more senior members of staff. You know, it's critical, I think, that a culture of trust is created where open communication in schools can help empower pupils and staff to speak up about their experiences and seek support when it's needed. So I guess our take home message today then is go and have a look at your policies. Do they even mention gaslighting? Take a step back and consider if the processes and systems that you have in place will not only help prevent these behaviours, but also, you know, are they effective enough to enable those who need it to seek help? Yeah, and I think my take home, Sam, is I'm going to go and suss out this movie. I have not seen it and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Oh, honestly, I promise it's an absolute cracker. Brilliant. Brilliant.